Uh, yes, Doug, thank you. Um, my name is Olivier. So, um, Ronnie, are you here? I know that you're going to... Um... Yes, I'm here. Yeah, uh, uh, Doug, uh, I would like to... St uh, uh, can you he hear me? Uh, it's Olivier speaking. Yes, we do hear you. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, would you mind um, sharing your screen? When you are not uh, creating a signature, but uh, I mean, verifying uh, an existing one, then what we were doing is basically uh, checking if uh, the hash is matching in the signature and the actual document. So we call this if uh, the digest is matching. Then we will do um, verification of the certificates of this X509 certificates. And um, we also check if the whole document is signed. So these are the cases how the whole signature verification can fail. And in case any of these are missing, then you get some kind of warning or error. And in case all of these are matching, then even the, the LibreOffice window title is modified that saying that this is a signed document. And all of this is based on um, X509 certificates. Uh, so for the scope of this talk, I'm not talking about the GPG-based uh, signing and encryption, rather uh, this um, X509 certificates. Uh, this is the same uh, stack uh, that's used for HTTPS and, and in general uh, for um, encrypted connections um, um, at the TCP level as well, usually. So the first thing that appeared in LibreOffice that was new in the area of digital signing um, about four years ago was um, uh, OXML signing, so signing of DOCX, XLSX, PPTX files, uh, which is somewhat similar to the of signing because W3C uh, sp uh, published a specification on the, how the core of such a di di digital signing should be performed on um, XML files. And ODF is building on top of that, and uh, OXML does the same in a bit different way. But at its core, it's, it's really the same uh, idea. Um, what's specific about OXML signing is that uh, it's not signing the metadata of the document, like last modified date, last print date, um, author name, and so on. Um, which means that in case you open these files in LibreOffice, then the best you can reach is this is almost perfect, but the document is only partially signed. You will never get a, a perfect signature due to this. Um, it's important that uh, we try to uh, handle um, existing signatures from Microsoft Office, and also what we create is meant to be um, verified successfully in Microsoft Office. Um, it's somewhat interesting that um, it has all this um, W3C uh, spec um, around the XML signing is working with various term transforms. So you have your, your input data, um, you process that through a list of transforms, and at the end you do your hashing and en encryption. And as part of that, um, OXML has a custom um, transform algorithm, uh, this relationship transform algorithm, which is used for the piece where um, uh, the various XML files in the zip point in are referring to each other. Um, this is um, really more like um, a, a map. So uh, you can look up various keys in that, and um, the values are the various streams in the zip file, which means that ordering of these is not interesting. And in the files, typically, they are not ordered. So they need an extra step for sorting these and uh, preparing them in a way that um, that even if you change the order of these um, relationships, um, the signature is not invalidated. Um, and that was um, uh, this, these supported algorithms were um, hard coded in the XMSSEC library. So, first I had to uh, improve the XMSSEC library to uh, support this transform and then do the work on the LibreOffice side. The other somewhat interesting uh, detail about uh, OXML signing is that um, the markup is. Um, designed in a way to leak all sorts of software and hardware details. So it's a bit awful. Like uh, you have to state what's your Windows version, what's your Microsoft Office version, what are the details of your monitor and whatnot. And in case you don't do that, then Word is refusing to verify your signature. So we have some hard-coded stops on the LibreOffice side um, stating 
something uh, because if the information is there then it's not a problem it's actually not uh, real information but something has to be filled in there um, now uh, the next uh, set of features that were added to LibreOffice in the area of uh, digital signing is uh, PDF files um, so the first thing was that we already had PDF export, so it makes sense to do a PDF signing as part of the PDF export. So you have some editable document, you, you do an export to a PDF file, and as part of that, ex that export to PDF, um, an optional single PDF signature can be added. This was started as a GSOC project, and um, uh, quite some work was done there, but sadly it did not reach a state where actually the ending um, signature would be in, um, would be validated in Adobe Acrobat, and um, totally request was uh, finishing that with the last bug fixes. Um, so now we can do a standard um, PKCS um, a binary signature, embed that to the PDF file, and typically um, various PDF readers can verify the signature. Uh, now, the other thing we did is that once you have such a PDF file, then we want to verify that. And that's much, much more problematic. Um, much more code had to be added there, and you had to work yourself through various layers and noticing all sorts of, all sorts of complexity that you did not really expect. And, and so, so it was a bit of crying, um, realizing how much work this, this requires. But at the end, it was, it was working. So what uh, was uh, first has to be decided is um, what we will use to parse the input PDF file. And we already had about three PDF parsers. And sadly, it was necessary to add the fourth one, just because none of the existing three was providing the, the requirements that was necessary here. So we already have a popular-based uh, PDF parser, which is used in case you open a PDF file in Draw and you want to map that to something editable, an ODG file. Uh, we also have a boost-based minimal parser, which is, I believe, used for hybrid PDF. So in case uh, you have such a, a PDF, then the original editable content will be opened in Write or Calc Impress. And for that, we are not using popular. And for inserting PDF images and various other smaller uh, PDF-related things, we also have PDF view, uh, which would be the best candidate for parsing, um, doing parsing for signature verification purposes. But uh, at least back then, it had no API to deal with signatures. Um, nowadays, it's, it's close to a feature set that we would need. So that could be a future direction to switch to that. But um, at least back then, that was uh, far from enough of what they were providing. So the basic uh, verification of um, such a PDF um, file is um, not that complicated. Assuming that there is a single signature in the PDF, then there is that, that um, uh, binary um, signature in the file in a hex stamp. You need to uh, find that and um, um, read all the data before and after that signature. Uh, you have to hash it and then compare if the hash in the signed um, um, signature binary is the same as the hash you get, and then you do your usual certificate validation. So that's not complicated. The, the, the problem is that um, uh, you can always add a new content to the end of a PDF file um, as, as, as in the form of an incremental update, and that in, introduces all sorts of complexity. Um, like the first one is you perhaps want multiple signatures, but strictly speaking, uh, only the last signature of the file will be valid because you added something new to the end of the file in a second signature. So by definition, your first signature is no longer covering the full document. So uh, strictly speaking, the first, um, the first signature is no longer valid. Of course, in real world, people want uh, PDF signatures where multiple signatures are on the file and they are still valid. So you enter in some kind of gray zone where you say that, well, uh, technically this is not valid, but let's still accept that. And then you have all sorts of trouble. Should we still accept this? Or this is now enough nonsense that this is invalid? And all sorts of corner, corner cases. So it's a bit sad that the PDF format is designed in this way that um, it um, does not allow perfect multiple signatures, but um, it is what it is. We have to live with that. What you can also do is uh, signing of existing PDF files. So you, uh, in the simplest case, you have a 
unsigned PDF file and you want to add some new content, that the answer that you turn that to a signed PDF file. Um, this is uh, working even with combination of uh, Adobe Acrobat. So you can do all sorts of combinations of uh, first doing your initial signature there and then the subsequent signature in LibreOffice or the other way around. And um, uh, given that, um, at least when this was first added, we were still producing PDF 1.4 files, um, not using any of the newer markup, but it's possible to create some newer PDF in Adobe Acrobat, and we want to still um, sign those things. All sorts of new PDF markup support was um, was added to this PDF parser, which is uh, focused on uh, signature handling. Instead of um, a, a more or less plain text cross-reference table at the end of the file, you can have compressed binary cross-reference streams. Um, also, for um, loads of uh, small uh, PDF objects in the file, you can turn that uh, to a compressed object stream. Uh, you can um, compress the stream in different ways um, with all sorts of different uh, compression algorithms and parameters for that. We had to support all this so that in case you throw a random file created in Adobe Acrobat uh, through um, that file on LibreOffice and want to sign that file, then we can actually support that. I don't, I believe we now have decent support for this. Um, um, the, the frequently used um, combinations are working nicely. Now, on top of existing XML uh, signing, uh, OXML signing and, um, and uh, PDF signing, uh, you can have support for the XADAS and PADAS standards, which are coming from the EU. Uh, they are a set of extensions to this XML signing and PDF signing. And um, what the promise um, they are providing is that if all the conditions are met, then this can result in a legally binding signature, which makes it a very interesting feature. Uh, perhaps now this won't be a toy signing anymore, but rather it will be the equivalent of physically signing a paper. But that again uh, introduced all sorts of um, new requirements. Uh, support for stronger hashing algorithms was needed. So the SHA-256 um, uh, support was added. Um, next to RSA, also the uh, newer ECDSA encryption algorithm was uh, necessary to be supported. Um, one, um, one reasonably easy thing to do, but it's very important, is that um, the signing certificate is no part of the signed data which means that um, normally you have a signing certificate that has your name on that and some expired date and whatnot. And one other item is the core of the certificate, some, some um, private key in the signing certificate. And then you have some um, matching public key for, uh, for that. And you, um, you are embedding that public key to the signed document. And the problem is that then you can have this attack that you create a second signing certificate which will contain the same private key, but it will have a completely different name. And that means that basically the signature was previously just proving that the document was signed with a given private key, but it was not proving that it was signed with a given signing certificate. And you as a human in the real world will actually want to prove um, with the signature, you want to prove that um, a certain person with a given name was signing that document. So that's why this is important. Um, at least for the PDF part, I will have a screenshot later. Uh, we are passing this uh, DSS validator, this digitally signed services validator. This is some Java application produced by the EU, and our PADAS output is passing that, at least the basic level is passing that. So that's uh, very nice. Um, now, the last um, uh, major feature uh, that was added in the area of digital signing is a uh, new this year, um, adding uh, support for visible signatures. And now, what, um, what that means is that previously, in case you added some signature to the document, then that was more like just a metadata. Uh, we were adding some signatures tab uh, to the document on the first page, zero size, uh, top left corner. And um, we wanted to, and and that was not really visible when you were viewing the document. Uh, just perhaps your PDF reader was pointing out that this document is signed. But if you do the same in the Acrobat, uh, Adobe Acrobat, then something visible as a widget was added to the document, and then we support the same. 
And um, actually, uh, the currently provided feature set is in some areas even superior to what you get from a paid DocuSign or, or, or the freeware Adobe Acrobat. So we do um, a vector-based um, graphic um, as, as, a, as a signature widget. It's not um, a bitmap where you zoom in and it looks uh, poor. We properly associate the signature widget with the actual um, a visible um, uh, signature markup, so this helps uh, accessibility. And also, um, it's a two-step uh, process. So first, you can um, insert your your signature rectangle. You can fine-tune the size and position, and then later you will do the actual signing. Uh, so a combination of all these three is something that LibreOffice provides, but uh, not these others. So that's um, a nice experience, I guess. Now the question is like how uh, this is what you see as a user, but how is this working in some deeper level? So one thing that was um, added is uh, signature descriptions. This is something that OXML PDF already has markup uh, for, but uh, for UDF this has had to be added, and this means that it makes uh, no it makes sense to sign the same document multiple times because you can have some comment or reason or description field and there you can state like uh, what uh, what do you state by creating this signature in case you are um, um, you have multiple reasons to sign a document um, for the oxml signature import um, as mentioned, uh, one, one thing that had to be done is this relationship transform algorithm, uh, implementing that and also submitting to upstream and XML stack library, getting a review there, uh, making sure that even the XML stack library maintainer is, is um, uh, understanding what's going on there and agreeing that this is the correct implementation for that. Um, in the XML security module in the core repository, we have a small XML uh, parser for the actual XML um, signature. And also what was um, what needed extending is that previously um, when we were checking if um, the document signature can be created or, or verified, we were just checking if this is ODL because we know nobody else is, no other format is supporting digital signatures. But now we had a second set of formats. The, OXML formats for um, uh, for um, uh, signatures. So you know there is a new filter flag saying import or export flag saying that this format supports digital signing. Uh, and some refactoring in XML security was needed so that most of the signature logic is now living not in the dialog but in a separate class, and then you can write nice CPP unit tasks for it. Uh, I will try to be um, um, progressing a bit uh, faster so that we still have uh, time for questions as well. Uh, so for the signature export, um, basically we had to do the opposite of the import file. Yes, somebody had a question or wanted to say something or not. Okay, let's, let's take as a no. So the import side, um, what uh, had to be supported is uh, creating the initial signature or appending uh, a second or third signature to the document. These are different cases, and we have separate files for the for the individual signatures, which is um, on one hand makes life easier because you can just run treat the files as is, unlike in ODF. On the other hand, then you have to have some list of references to these files and you have to maintain that, uh, um, that uh, list and uh, make sure that uh, that's uh, may, uh, always kept up to date. Uh, very for, for verifying um, existing PDF files, uh, what was um, uh, an additional user interface is that when you open some uh, document for um, um, that's already uh, signed or you open it for signing, then we have some additional UI discouraging you from editing the PDF file because then you will lose your existing signatures. Um, for the PADA support, here is a small, simple screenshot of uh, passing that, uh, that validator. Um, what uh, what was new is that uh, now we default to this uh, stronger SHA-256 um, hashing algorithm for uh, PDF um, signatures, and we embed this uh, signing certificate. And um, on the import side, we don't do the full PADES verification, but at least we can point out that if this signature is containing any sort of signature or um, um, uh, PADA signature. Um, now, uh, 
a separate bit was adding support for this ECDSA encryption algorithm, which was um, particularly painful because on Windows, we were using some older Windows API, which was not supporting this. And I had to port over all the hashing and algorithm code on the LibreOffice side from this older API to this Microsoft CNG. Uh, which is uh, supporting ECDSA, but uh, then, then resulted in uh, some nice uh, feature where you can, in case your, your country is providing these electronic IDs for you, like Hungary does, for example, then you can use um, do some real hardware-based, uh, hardware key-based uh, signing inside LibreOffice, and it's working nicely, integrates with the driver and so on. Um, and for the last um, feature for the PDF signing, um, I tried hard to reuse existing code and not reinvent the wheel. So the user interface is um, um, very similar to signature lines, which is already available in Writer and Calc. Um, also, the the, the generated PDF markup is um, using this feature that you can select a shape and export that shape to PDF, just that single shape. Um, we are generating for the PDF, like for the visible uh, PDF signature, um, we feature your the signing date, for example, that's nicely local aware as you would expect from the office. Um, and also, um, this is working with multiple signatures, multiple pages, and so on. Um, to give credit, uh, most of this work was sponsored by the Dutch Ministry of Defense and, and a small company now in Nadov in the Netherlands. So that's why it was possible to make this work available for now for everyone, uh, given that like um, at Colaboro, we are um, making all of our work open source. So if uh, we do something, somebody has to pay for them. So I guess uh, this is it. Uh, the summary is that um, uh, signature descriptions or these XADAS and PADAS standards are uh, are now supported. Stronger hashing algorithms, more modern encryption algorithms are supported. We are hopefully basically on par with Microsoft Office and Adobe Acrobandas with their native file formats. And this latest thing this year was this visible PDF signatures. So thanks for listening. And I wonder if there are questions like we have still about um, seven minutes for questions in case there is anything. Um, at least now I switch to the chat window and see I am not offline for like 20 minutes. So that's, uh, that's great. <laughs> So until um, somebody came up with some question, uh, the, um, one detail I can share with is um, how to eliminate that uh, four different PDF uh, parsers that we have, which is like uh, very annoying. Uh, the hope is that uh, at least this um, this internal um, PDF tokenizer just added just for signature purposes that can be hopefully eliminated, and you we we could use PDF M installed. It's just. Um, um, there is this locked up all the time that uh, um, LibreOffice wants this and that detail of the PDF file, and then we want to use some public PDF in API to get that information from the PDF file. So I uh, go to the PDF in project, discuss there if it makes sense to add that information to, to the public API. Then um, finally, you get a go from PDF in that saying that it makes sense to implement that. So you implement that, and then you wait um, some time till we update. Uh, the, the bundled PDF in version in LibreOffice so that we have that uh, API available. And then you hope that in the meantime, there is no require more new requirements and new detail uh, um, needed on the LibreOffice side. And at some stage, hopefully, we will bundle some new enough PDF in which will provide all the details that we need. And then we can switch to that. The actual switch is not that complicated, but more complicated is that. Uh, initially, PDF was just focusing on just rendering a PDF file, and for rendering, you need less information compared to what you need for digital signing. So, uh, first, we need to kind of improve PDF uh, so that uh, it provides everything what we need. So that's a longer term thing, but uh, I still believe that um, uh, we can we can get there at some stage.
any questions at all? Yeah, I thought, I, I'm Miklos Kor here, I, I thought someone fellow just uh, raised his or her hand to say something. No uh -huh. idea. But I have no idea who who it was, how this works, but... Yeah, so it was you, in case it was you who raised your hand, then please ask your question. Thank you. No, m m may have been uh, uh, hit on the R key, uh, raise hands uh, by accident, maybe. Yeah, that's quite possible. <laughs> if no one asks. Okay. Okay, so in case there are no questions, then thank you for your attention and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks. Thank you very much.